Hey, welcome to the broadcast. My name is Jeremy Fine. I'm the pastor here at Accelerate Church, and this is my wife. Hi, I'm Erin, and we are so excited here at Accelerate Church that you have joined and tuned in today, and we invite you to come sometime. Just come visit us. We'd love to have you and see you, and I just want you to know that the Holy Spirit has a word just for you today. You may be going through all kinds of things in life, but if you will tune in to His voice and His Word, He has your answer. That's right. If you can't join us in person at 10 a.m. on Sundays at 4400 South Crockett, then you ought to go to our website, AccelerateChurch.cc. We have all our sermons there, and you can watch our services live and be a part of what God is doing here at Accelerate Church. But right now, we're going to get into the Word today. This is what your forecast for 2024 is going to look like. It's in 1 Kings 17. I don't have it on the screen. I hope you brought your Bible. 1 Kings 17. And you see this most interesting story about Elijah and a widow here. And this would make humanists mad still to this day. It probably did during this day. <laughs> it says, the word of the Lord came, verse 8, 1 Kings 17, to the man of God here, Elijah. And the Lord said, arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Wow. That's interesting, isn't it? You don't go by the way you think it should be. You go by what God says. So he arose, verse 10 says. I like that. If God says do something, do it. This is your forecast for 2024. I believe the Lord wanted me to tell you this right here in the Word. This is your forecast. You can expect what happened to this lady to happen to you, praise God. If you do what she did. It starts with the man of God doing what God said to do. He said go, so he went. What if he had gone to a different town? to the then New York City, which didn't exist back then, but he went to the big city where there was a whole lot of people because he was going by what he thought was right. No, he went by what God said. God said, arise, go to Zarephath. So the next verse, verse 10, so he arose and went to where? Zarephath, there he went. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called her and said, please bring me a little water and a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said this, verse 12, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, and we may eat it and die. Where is your faith? Verse 13, Elijah said, do not Fear, 2024, this is your forecast. Do not fear. Go and do as you've said, but make me, the man of God said, a small cake from it first. Everybody say first. first. This is First Fruit Sunday. I'm not talking about that yet. I will in just a little bit. But I, this, this is, hey, I'm free to follow the Holy Spirit. I have order of service that we made, but I, you know what? If the Holy Spirit wants to blow that up, blow it up. And this is what I have burning in me. This is, this is your impartation for 2024. Yeah. Everybody say first. See, this was a principle here. God will always check you to see, do you recognize me first? This wasn't about Elijah. This was about God. Elijah was not her provider. God is her provider. Same with you. Are you listening? Go make me some first and bring it to me. Afterward, make some for yourself. When? When's the afterward? After you made it for the man of God. Now look at this. Verse 14. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away, and here's a very crucial moment. She did according to the word of Elijah. She didn't just take it as the word of Elijah. She took it as the word of God. And, she, and he and her household ate for many days. I thought she was gathering sticks to cook one meal and die. But now when you act on the word, now God is active. And guess what happens when the blessing gets active? Multiplying effect starts happening. You see it in the New Testament when Jesus said, let's feed this group of 5,000 men only, if their wives were there and they only had one child, that's 15,000 people. But, you know, Jewish people didn't have just one child. They had a lot, usually. So some scholars say there was, you know, 20,000 or more people there that day. I think that's a conservative guess. And so 
Jesus used his help ministry to get them all in order. And here's what they brought. You ready for this? It wasn't the Golden Trough Cafe down there. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. The Golden Corral. I call it the Golden Trough many times. Just come up, pull up a seat, and just eat away. They're always slammed every time I drop by there. People like that, don't they? That's not, what, that's not what they had that day when Jesus was teaching. You know what they had? Does anybody know the story? What did they have, Tim? Bread and fish, and not much of either. And Jesus blessed it, and he started distributing it. And let me tell you, it just kept coming and coming and coming and, until there were 12 baskets full overflowing. Wow, how does that happen? From just a few fish and loaves. When the blessing gets activated, look out now. That's what was happening to this lady. She went away. She did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he, notice that, the man of God, and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken by Elijah. There's your forecast for 2024. You may not understand how. You may not be able to articulate it. But let me just tell you something. If you keep doing what God said, he's just going to make it just keep on happening. What? The oil of joy. Yeah, are you listening? Praise God. Manna for you to eat. God has never forsaken the righteous, even when the children of Israel, under an old covenant that wasn't as good as our new covenant, he provided for them every day manna. And do you understand how many tons of food that was day after day? God's going to provide for you. Whatever happens in 2024 financially, I want you to listen to me clearly. God's going to provide for you if you do according to the word of the Lord. Amen. I receive that. Praise the Lord. I started Wednesday night talking to you about what did Jesus say about the Holy Spirit. And I cannot emphasize this enough. You need the Holy Spirit in your life and involved in every detail of your life in 2024 like never, ever before. You need him, and you need him bad in 2024. You may not see that yet because it's a new year. You're still excited. But let me just tell you, you need him. You need him, and you need him bad. And I believe going into this new year that we should be more committed than ever to praying in the Spirit every day. So Wednesday as we started this, I just want to let you know this is probably the most powerful sermon ever preached. So I hope you have your seatbelt buckled. Because when the Holy Spirit's at work, look out now. Jesus told us a lot about the Holy Spirit and the effect that he has on our life. And it looks like I'm going to have to continue this on Wednesday night to, to sum it all up. And I'm just going to list you one thing after another that we've looked at in the Word that happens when we pray in the Spirit. Because this is, it is really phenomenal, for lack of a better word. It is amazing what is happening as we pray in the Spirit. Jesus said this, that the Holy Spirit in our lives, is our comforter. He's our counselor. He's our paraclete, the one called alongside us, the one that's guarding our six, our backside. Are you listening to me? Which I had to point this out, and I need to point it out again today. The armor of God, when you look at the breastplate, you look at all of this, it's all for the frontward movement of you going forward in God. There's no armor given for the back except the paraclete. And I shouldn't say except because let me tell you, there's nothing that could be more powerful guarding your rear end. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. That means any sneak attacks, he will thwart. Praise the God. Praise God. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And he will guide us into all truth, Jesus said. <laughs> he said, the spirit that I'm sending, telling his disciples before he was glorified, I'm sending him. He's going to remind you of all my words. So maybe you weren't forced like I was as a teenager to memorize the Word of God. Maybe you don't have that in your background, but let me tell you, the Holy Spirit can bring up Scripture to your mind. I'm thinking of a man of God that pastored for a small season, he, even here in Amarillo, named Dake, Finnis Dake. And he's the one that has the God's plan for man, the study that's happening tonight at 6 o'clock. Pastor Rick, he's been teaching for not, almost 19 years now. 20 See, I blink, and a year, another two years go by. Wow, almost 20 years here. Wow, that's amazing. There's a lot to that, right? Well, this man, when he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, which is what I'm talking to you about, he had a gift given him where he could 
quote the entire New Testament like that. Well, there was a radio DJ here in town that was mocking him, making fun of him, and said, I want to see you come on the radio live and do this. And you know what Dake told him? Here's, here's what he said. Okay, I'll come. Here's my question. Do you want the punctuation or not? He wasn't arrogant. He had a gift from the Holy Spirit. Why? One of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to bring God's Word back to your mind because you never know what you're going to face on a weekly basis. And in the thick of the battle, you need a word from God to get you through many times. Praise God. Wake up. Hi, my name is Aaron File, and I'm the pastor's wife here at Accelerate Church where we are telling people, wake up. If you have been lulled to sleep in this crazy life, it's time to wake up to who you are called to be. God has called you. And you might say, Aaron, well, well my life is, is pretty pitiful. It, it doesn't match the church. Well, you know what? Who cares about the past? It's time to change that. Today is your day to change it. Today is a new day. God's given you a new day. His mercies are new every morning and His mercies are towards you today to say, come, come to the house of the Lord. Come to Accelerate Church. Come, the Holy Spirit's drawing you. He's calling you. I believe that's why you're watching even now because the Holy Spirit is saying, I know you by name and come, come to God, come to His family and learn to live in freedom, learn to live in peace and learn to live in joy. We want you here at Accelerate Church. Well, right before Jesus went to heaven, in Acts chapter 1, he spoke about the Holy Spirit for the last time while he was on the planet Earth here. Say, thank God for the Word. And shout because we're turning to Acts chapter 1. Yeah, Acts chapter 1. Verse 4, and being assembled together with them, Jesus commanded them, do not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. And we looked at all of those verses where he told his disciples about what was going to happen on Wednesday night. If you missed it, you need to get the recording. I can't go back over all that. But let me just say, Jesus didn't leave them in the dark here. All of them that followed him knew exactly what he was talking about. Go and wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. See, it really matters whether or not you pay attention, even on a Sunday like this. You never know what Sunday God's going to give a word that you're going to need for this year to make this year keep going. As I'm telling you, I've seen so many Christians in my lifetime. That they're excited about God, especially on something like this. You know, we just came out of Christmas season. It's the first Sunday of the year. I'm committed to God. I'm following God. That's great. That's good. But what happens when life happens out here? When life deals you a hand you weren't expecting? Well, you got to hold to the Word. And it's the Word that you hear in the calm that will get you through the choppy water. Don't wait for the choppy water of the storm before you decide to get the Word in you. That right there will change your life. In the calm, in the calm, get that word in you. But you know what happens? People, oh, this ain't the Holy Spirit. Well, I'm bored. Oh, it's time for the word again. Let me check my social media. Oh, yeah, it's just Jeremy talking again. You ain't going to receive. Don't worry. They did that to Jesus in Nazareth, so that's okay. I'm not mad at you for doing that. I'm just saying you're wasting your time. If you, I just, can I just tell you, to come to church and mad mug the preacher is a waste of your time. Because I'm going to preach the word. I already said it. I said it back in my office. I'm not moved by people. I always had this. Or their faces. I'm moved by the Holy Spirit. I talk like that. Yeah, I remember Coach Diaz, he, one day I had him say something, give a testimony or something. He said, wow, Pastor. I stood and I saw what you're talking about. I said, yeah, it's, it's a pretty sight sometimes. Other times, it's, uh, it is what it is. But I can tell you right now, you need the word. And even if you ain't feeling it, you need to listen to the Word because it's the Word that's going to get you through the storm. Somebody say amen. amen. Has anybody made it through the storm by holding to the Word? Yeah. So I hope you're listening today. They didn't know at this exact moment that it would only be 10 days they would have to wait from the moment he's saying this. 10 days. But yet, let me just say this. In Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, it says he appeared to over 500 people after his resurrection. I can't help but notice this. The vast majority of people that saw Jesus risen from the dead didn't stay and wait 10 days. 
I don't know how many of those 500 were there that day when he was saying this on Mount Olives, but I can tell you right now, the vast majority of 500, if I saw him and I saw those nail prints, I said, he rose from the dead, I would be following him everywhere. Until he ran me away, I'd say, I'm sticking right here. This is the king. There's no doubt. There's no doubt about it. The whole earth turned dark. There was an earthquake when he was on the cross. He rose again three days later. All those soldiers with the death sentence guarding that tomb all for nothing? Wow. Wasting their time. These were lethal soldiers. Soldiers died because Jesus rose from the grave. Wow. And so he appears, and over 500 seem, and yet when he's saying this, we know, as you're about to read with me here in Acts, there was only 120 that did what he said right here, which tells me why even now, across the whole world, the majority of the church doesn't believe in what I'm talking to you about today, and they think it's controversial. Many that do, they've been taught many different things about it, but I'm here to let you know something from the get-go. There's at least 380 people that saw Jesus in his resurrected body that didn't wait for this to happen. Wow. And when you don't do what Jesus says, it causes you, this is what the human does, to try to form a different doctrine than what Jesus said. I'm going to go be a witness for him even without this. You might cause a mess. Glory to God, I'm preaching. Verse 9. John truly baptized with water. Jesus is helping him hone in exactly what he's talking about. But you shall be baptized, Acts 1, 5 says, with the Holy Spirit not many days from right now. Again, it was 10 days. 10 days later. Go down to verse 8. But you shall receive power. Everybody say power. power. That is the word dunamis. We get our word dynamite from it. So Jesus was saying this. You are going to receive dynamite power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, yeah, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, when Jesus had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their side. We've looked at that verse several times this year, because we're expecting him to come back just how he went away. But today I'm talking to you about while we're still here. Because here we are in 2024. I didn't expect it. You may not have either. But we're still here. And guess who else is here? The great comforter. The Holy Spirit. Our paraclete. The one who's going to lead us and guide us all the way to the end in Jesus' name. Now these were the last words that Jesus gave us before he departed. We know several years later he spoke in vision form to John the Revelator on the Isle of Patmos. And he wrote that down, thank God. He wrote to the churches specifically. He talked about in the end of Revelation chapter 21 and 22, Behold, I come quickly. He said it three times to end the book. That's what's on his mind today. He's coming. And you better be filled with the Holy Spirit. You better have your jars filled with oil. Keep your light burning for the Lord, praise God, because he is coming. Now, what you need to understand is this. This was the last words that Jesus spoke before being raptured telling us this is his will for everyone who calls on him to be their Lord and Savior, that they do exactly what he said and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, he tells us this right in his last words, what Jesus said. Power comes upon you, praise God. Dynamite power comes upon you when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Do you believe that? Well, I want you to think of this. Mix that dynamite power with the authority that he's given us. Because he's given us authority over all the power of the devil. Authority trumps power, but he said, I'm not just going to leave you with my authority. I'm going to give you my authority and my dynamite Holy Ghost power. <laughs> you mix that together, get ready to see the miraculous in 2024. You can stay up to date with everything happening at Accelerate Church by downloading our app. Add events directly to your calendar, receive notifications when services are going live, hear previous sermons preached by Pastor Jeremy, and you can even give right there from your mobile device. The Accelerate Church app has everything you need right there in the palm of your hand. Head over to your app store today and type in Accelerate Church Amarillo to download to your mobile device. The Holy Spirit also, take note of this, will help you be an effective witness. You need to know this because not everybody's in the same boat. I figured this out the hard way. I had a heart for God, praise the Lord. I said to the manager at a certain toot and totem, that's our local 
uh, convenience store one night. Uh, and you've heard this story if you've been here a while. But I said, can I witness out here? Because I, I knew I had to be proper. I didn't want to just intrude on someone's property and get in trouble. They said, you can as long as you don't badger anyone or give them a hard time. I said, sure. So I stood out there, and I had my little fisherman's hat looking thing on thing, and I'm looking cool. This was back in the 90s, okay? So this is back in the day. And I'm sitting there. I just want to be a witness for God. I just, I just want to shine the light. So I'm standing out there. People are walking into the tooting tunnel. I'm like, hey, Jesus loves you. And, you know, nobody even got mad at that. The whole, that's all I was saying. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. But then I'll never forget the guy that had the Keystone Light 24-pack. Because I said, Jesus loves you. He said, thanks, bro. Thanks. Held that up. And it just hit me all of a sudden. I was like, wait a minute. Did I just confirm a guy going to hell? I mean, the Bible says drunkards are going to hell. I didn't say that. The Bible says it. I made that in my, my belief because it's in the Bible. And here I am, Jesus loves you. No, Jesus does love everyone. Every boy, every girl, black or white, yellow. You know, I used to sing that as a little kid. Jesus loves all the children of the world and adults too. Praise the Lord. He loves everybody. You need to know that. But his love isn't what gets you to heaven. Your love for him. Your love for him in return for his love he demonstrated for the whole world. That's what makes the difference. Somebody say amen to that. Well, as I've continued to grow up, I've realized, hey, there's all kinds of ways to witness. There are times people need to hear Jesus loves you. There are people, because see, there's no way you can know what every single person's been through. Who has a mama praying, a cousin praying? Who has a preacher that's been planting seeds in them, right? You don't know what all someone and where they're at exactly, but the Holy Spirit does. So he's going to help you be an effective witness. There are times you need to tell people, Jesus loves you. And I pray that God used those seeds I planted and that someone was brought to Christ through it. But there's other times that you need to say, hey, he loves you too much for you to keep living this way. you got to turn and repent. You see, and people say, well, I, nobody wants to be that one. You know, the, repent. No, that don't do it no good. Well, either way, let me tell you something. You don't know the most effective way unless you're praying in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will help you know exactly where someone's at. But that goes way beyond your natural mind and knowing, oh, they've dealt with this. They've had this person tell them this. You don't need to even dive into all that. You need the Holy Spirit to help you so that you can be effective. Somebody say, thank God for the Holy Spirit. Well, Acts 2 shows up, the day of Pentecost, Acts 2-1. When it had fully come, that's 50 days since the first fruits. Woo-hoo. The first day of Pentecost, it fully come. They were in one accord, and it wasn't a Honda. <laughs> Some people, they, when it comes to this subject, they're like, oh, yeah, I speak in tongues. I should have bought a Honda. Well, that's not really speaking in tongues. It's really not. I don't mean that mocking. I told that to somebody the other day, and they acted like they hadn't heard that joke before. I said, man, that, that's so old school that I'm like... I was a kid back in the day. I thought that was so cool when I was a kid. I should have bought a Honda. But, but that's not really, can I tell you something? Can I just say this? It's not necessarily about the syllables you're saying. It's about the work that's going on on the inside of you. But there should be some syllables that you don't understand coming out of your mouth. I'm going to talk more about it. The day of Pentecost had fully come. They were with one accord in one place. What were they doing that based on? The words of Jesus 10 days earlier. Could you keep doing the word if you hadn't seen any breakthrough in 10 days? Could you still do what the word says to do in 10 days? Come on, somebody. Verse 2, Acts 2. And suddenly, everybody say suddenly. See, when you do the word, there always comes a suddenly. You just don't know when the suddenly's coming. That's what makes it suddenly. Suddenly. There came a sound from heaven. As of a rushing mighty wind. They're in an upper room. They're inside. It filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then appeared to them different kinds of tongues. That's what divided tongues mean. As a fire. So it looked like fire on top of their head. Woo! And one set upon each of them. Somebody say new experience. There's nowhere in the Bible this had happened before. This was brand new. <laughs> Praise yeah, I get excited about it. Acts 2-4. Heard an old Pentecostal preacher. He said years ago when I was a little kid, he said, when people don't believe in tongues, slap them in the face with Acts 2-4. I came to slap you in the face with it today in love. 
They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Take note of this. When the Holy Spirit fills someone, tongues are a part of it. Tongues are a part of it. It's nothing to be freaked out about. But you speak in a tongue that you do not know. My wife and I, we went to a good Thai restaurant last night on a little date. And the lady and, and the man, I think they're the owners of the place, they started talking to each other because they mixed up an order. And they started talking in that language. And I told my wife, I said, I think I've spoken that in tongues before. Because <laughs> I don't know what they were saying. It was unknown to me. But they weren't speaking by the Holy Spirit. They were talking to each other about a mix-up they had there in the kitchen and, and delivering it to the wrong people, right? But I thought when I heard that, I was like, that sounds like I've heard myself sometimes. I'm like, wow, I'm speaking in a tongue I do not know, but I can tell you what I am doing, giving glory to God. Yeah. Amen. amen. Somebody say amen to this. Amen. Notice this. You really got to pay attention to this. This is where a lot of confusion happens. The Holy Spirit gives the utterance. Do you see that? But can I tell you something? You give that utterance voice. So the words actually bubble up from your spirit. And I recently told you about Dr. Avery Jackson that I was able to meet and even have lunch with. He spoke at the leadership conference up in Michigan back in December. And he talked, he's a, he's a neurosurgeon, and he talked about speaking in tongues. He said the parts of the brain that are required for you to talk and have a conversation they go completely, psh, there's no, they're not lighting up whenever you're praying in the Spirit. is coming from a different place than your brain. Woo! Why is that? It's because the Bible's true. The Holy Spirit is who gives the utterance. In other words, speaking in tongues doesn't come from your brain. Guess who's going to have a problem with that? Your brain. Because every other time you talk, your brain is active. Me speaking to you today. Notice I'm not just speaking in tongues. That would be a lot easier, but you would not benefit from that. Because I would be praying to God. That would build me up even higher than I already am. Praise God because of an effect that's happening. I'm trying to look at it today, but I'm stirred up about this. The Holy Spirit wants to fill every believer. And in 2024, this is vital to your survival to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to pray every day in tongues. This is the doorway into the supernatural way of living. It's the only gift of the Spirit you control. All the rest, the Bible says, quote, they happen as He wills. You pray in the Spirit, your personal prayer language, whenever you want. Pastor Jeremy here. That's all the time we have today. So I hate to interrupt myself preaching there, but we had a good time today. Yes, we did. And we invite <laughs> you to come in person. Come see us. Stop by and say, hey, Pastor Jeremy. Hey, Miss Erin. I saw you on TV because we would love to meet you Absolutely. and shake your hand. Absolutely. And be sure and tune in again next time on the same station, same time for the Accelerate Church television broadcast.